Mate, you got one? You can't believe this. It's got like a bloody tree. Adventurer Steve Backshall takes us on a journey across Thailand in search of a possible cure for fatal snake bites. Stay well clear below me, Mark. Well clear. Along the way, we'll meet snake boxers who risk their lives for the sake of entertainment. How many times did snake bite you? Nineteen. Nineteen? Nineteen! Discover their secret to survival. Yes. This works as an antidote against all of those different snakes yes, and scorpions. It, yes, it's, it's true. That's amazing. In this dangerous world, not all will survive. And in the morning, he just passed away in the hospital. Oh, God. But first, he has to catch one. Right, let's try and get it down. This is crazy. Come on, fella. This has got to be a fully grown male. You never get a female at this sort of size. Oh, and he's coming after me. <sighs> right. Found myself at something of an impasse. I've now got a four metre long king cobra up a tree staring at me. Join Steve Backshall in. King Cobra, face to face. Steve Backshall is a true wildlife adventurer and has been on missions all around the world. Steve's journey this time starts in Thailand. Paradise for modern hippies, sun seekers and soul searchers, Buddhists and backpackers. On this mission, Steve is searching for the world's biggest venomous snake, the King Cobra. One bite can kill in a mere minute and a half. In this small village in Thailand, the locals have realized that cobras mean cash. Every day they dance with deadly snakes to attract the tourists. Here, cobras are kept as pets and playthings. A trouser snake is literally a snake in the trousers. And it's far from taboo to kiss a cobra. It takes a brave man to do this job. These snakes can actually kill you. One lethal bite pumps in almost one teaspoon of venom, enough to bring down a buffalo. So how do these men survive the deadliest job in the world? They get bitten often, but amazingly live to tell the tale. These villagers take huge risks because they believe they found a miracle cure, a local route which protects them from fatal snake bites. If true, Steve is here to try and solve the mystery. Along the way, he'll get up close and personal with some amazing reptiles. His aim is to catch a wild king cobra and test its venom on his very own flesh. But first, let's find out how to learn the professional art of snake boxing. Seems around here you're never too young to start. This kid's only five years old and already he's messing around with snakes. <laughs> They call this a jumping snake. It's, uh, it's actually a keelback. It's a non-venomous snake, but it can give you a pretty nasty bite. And as you can see, very, very aggressive, trying to bite all the time, snaking its body back, flattening itself out, giving itself a really aggressive appearance, and biting non-stop. This kid is nails, look at him. It's absolutely crazy. And a little bit weird as well. I mean, it is actually biting him repeatedly, and that has got to hurt. Hello, fellow. Yeah, where are you off to? Look inside here, just trying to see if it's actually got any teeth. And it has got lots of very small little teeth in there, you can see. Pretty gutsy for a five year old kid. <laughs> So much for traditional schooling, but at least he'll have a job when he grows up, if he lives that long. This is 
very, very like snake charming you see in India. The snake works mostly off visual cues, so if you wave something in front of it, it automatically responds to that. But mostly... Wow. But mostly it's to touch and to visual cues. Their eyesight's fantastic. So if you keep something moving in front of it, then it's always going to be fixed on that. And this is a seriously big snake. Not in the pants. Bao Li Chai is one of the best known snake boxers in this area. He's been bitten an incredible 19 times. <laughs> Pretty much everywhere imaginable. Bali Chai. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. My goodness, look at this. King Cobra, but King Cobra. King Cobra bite you here. King Cobra. No, King Cobra. Not die, not die, not die. Not die? Not die. How, how many times bite? One, two? Yeah, yeah. No problem. No problem? No problem. Not die, not die. <laughs> well, I can see you're not dying, yeah, you're yeah, still here. Yeah, yeah. King Cobra. So this, this is from snake bite. How many times did snake bite you? Nineteen. Nineteen? Nineteen! That's... This guy's a freak. That's just not possible. I mean, one bite from a King Cobra is just probably 80% likely to be fatal, and he's had... Nineteen. Um, Nineteen snake King Cobra. Uh, no? And you're still alive? Yeah. Still going? Yeah. Still strong? Yeah. <laughs> This man is a living miracle. By rights, he should be dead many times over. When the King Cobra bites, it produces nearly a teaspoon of deadly venom, a complicated cocktail of different poisons which are pumped down its hollow fangs and into the victim's flesh. Some of these poisons close down the central nervous system. Others cause cell death, leading to the loss of flesh and even limbs. Despite Bao Li Chai losing parts of limbs, he has still managed to survive numerous snake bites. So what's his secret? This is Kokoma Longa. It grows around here almost like a weed. And the locals believe that if they stuff their faces full of it, it'll actually protect them from cobra bites. Steve wants to check out this miracle root for himself. So he's off to the woods with a monk, a herbalist, and a chemist. Why a monk? They are the ones who discovered it. When it grows, it, it, it will make a shape like a snake. That's why they call it the queen snake. They call this the queen snake plant. Yes. When it grows, it's about one and a half meter, one meter. Oh, wow. It's everywhere. It looks like, like ginseng or, or ginger. Yeah. That's the stuff. All different kinds of snake include cobra, king cobra, scorpion as well. Really? And yes. This, this works as an antidote against all of those different snakes yes, and scorpions? It, yes, it's, it's true. That's amazing. And then we break it and just put it on or just paste the liquid. Yes. Is, is this a very common plant? No, it's not. It's only uh, grow in special place. And how how did they find out? How did they know that by eating this plant, suddenly they are 
immune to snake bite. Who found that out? Me, me. It, when the man go to meditate in the forest, and then maybe they get bite or poisoning, they, they just look for the root that can cure the, the pain, and he tastes it, and they found it works for a poisoning snake or the insect. That is absolutely unbelievable. Yes. If this root is proven to work, it would be an incredible discovery. This simple plant could save thousands of lives. Now back to the shack to cook up a cure. First, grate your root, then add some fire water, the sort of alcohol that should be banned. And what is this that we're going to mix this, with? This uh, whiskey, or I think it's like a vodka, Thai whiskey. vodka. Ooh, fire water? Yeah. And how often does he drink this? this mixture? If he got the snake bite, two or three times per hour. If he has a problem with the respiration, he would take more. Does this work on many different kinds of snake bite? Or venom snake. Really? Yes. And now he's going to drink. And now for the crucial taste test. Oh, mate, that looks rotten. Ah, you can try it. <laughs> I tell you, just the smell of it. I reckon even just the whiskey would mm, kill off the snake venom. Possums up. <laughs> that is absolutely Party. rancid. Party. <laughs> 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 oh, do you know what? I think I'd rather die a snake bite than drink, a, <laughs> drink any more of that. <laughs> I'd, I'd also just like to point out that this guy's high-tech grater for his herbs is actually just the end of a watering can. Nice. <laughs> the medicine isn't designed to taste nice, but if you're about to die, you're not going to argue. Apart from the snake boxes, there's one other who's a total believer. Dr. Eric Latman teaches chemistry at Aston University in Birmingham. For the last few years, he's been running a major research project to test the science of this magical root. We went to the King Cobra village, and then suddenly we have seen this amazing plant, a cure against the snake bite. A little bit about the statistics. If 15 people got a King Cobra snake bite and they don't take the plant, 13 would die. If they take the plant, 13 would survive. This makes a big difference. It's like a life insurance. They know if something goes wrong, they can use the plant and can save their lives. Now that Steve has tasted the remedy, he wants to not only collect the venom, but also test it out on his own flesh. It will be one of the most nerve-wracking challenges of his life to catch the biggest venomous snake of them all, the King Cobra. <laughs> Adventurer Steve Backshall is on a quest to find out the truth about a miracle cure. These villagers earn a living dancing with deadly snakes, convinced they're immune thanks to a simple local plant. Veteran snake boxer Bao Li Chai has been bitten no less than 19 times. He keeps dozens of dangerous snakes in boxes, all under his house. Nice. This is a monocle cobra. Check out the knee. Don't let its size fool you. The monocle cobra's venom is more toxic than its cousin, the king cobra, and it's more than enough to kill you. Do you see that? Great big 
gob of venom just spat all over us. Tell you what, I thought I had some weird pets. This guy absolutely does me. Oh, nice. And this is a racer. Lovely. Not venomous. As you can see, it likes to bite. See, this one flattens its body out sideways to make itself look bigger, as opposed to the cobras flattening out lengthways. Just exactly the same mechanism, though. You keep away from my family jewels, son. <laughs> so, this guy actually keeps, yeah, yeah, some of the biggest snakes I've ever seen underneath his house. There is an absolutely huge king cobra. At the size of that. Okay, this kind of goes against every single thing I've ever learned about venomous snakes. This is one of the most dangerous snakes in the world, and he's just got it sniffing around his wrists like it's nothing. Look at that. And this this has teeth, fangs, still has fangs. Can I see? Yeah? You, can you show the teeth? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Why would you do that? You. He's just put a king cobra in his mouth. Mate, you're a legend, but you're not right. Bao Li Chai is an experienced snake handler, and because he is so used to dealing with these types of dangerous animals, he has no fear. And you can see the venom glands here. There's two complete fangs there. They've not been filed down, they've not been removed at all. This is the real deal. And I'm looking down the throat of a king cobra. Venomous snakes kill around a thousand people worldwide each week. But these men don't look worried. That is one of the biggest venomous snakes I've ever seen. Look at the size of it. Now, this might seem absolutely psychotic what he's doing here. But in reality, he's just working off the snake's very predictable mechanisms of reacting to threats. I mean, its first actual... The first thing it actually attempts to do is what it's doing now, which is to escape and to get away. And when it's restricted, when it's held back, it's putting on a great big show to tell him it's too big to mess with. You can see spreading out those cervical ribs, spreading out that hood, making itself seem big and aggressive, opening its mouth out, but it's actually never making a true strike. None of these strikes here are actually intended to wound. They're all intended to scare away. You also see this, all of this approaching from the top of the snake, coming down onto the head. It looks absolutely insane, but actually, it's really not that dangerous. The thing is, the snake's venomous fangs are located in the upper jaw, and it can actually only strike downwards. So if you come down on the head, then really, it can't get at you. Whoa. All that said, this is a snake that could kill you in a matter of minutes. And these guys are absolutely bonkers. I'd love to be able to say that this village does a great job for snake conservation and changing people's attitude towards snakes, but let's be honest, this place is all about prodding snakes for money. If you want to see these majestic creatures at their best, then you're going to have to go into their environment. A 
been into snakes and creepy crawlies ever since I was a kid. I'm bitten more times than I can remember, and hospitalised once, but I'm still something of a snake geek. Look at that mouth. That is a face only a mother could love. It's a Tokei Gecko. These really are the voice of Asia. Come dusk, you'll hear these ones calling out to each other. And it goes something like, Toke, Toke, which is where they get their name from, funnily enough. And you wouldn't want to put your finger in there because you'd probably lose it. Searching for snakes in this kind of environment is actually a total nightmare. Very, very dry at the moment. Dead leaves everywhere. And although snakes don't have any external ears, they can still hear, and they're very sensitive to vibrations. And me stomping through here like an elephant is not working. need to keep well back. This is a, uh, a monocle cobra. Look at that. I have never seen a snake move so quick in all my life. Let's see if we can get it into the open. Come on, you beauty. This is the most common cobra found around here. This is nothing like as big as the snakes we're looking for, but far more fiery and actually no less dangerous. They have incredibly toxic venom. And in addition to the neurotoxins, which work the same way as the King Cobra venom, heading straight for your nervous system, this one also has some really nasty enzymes, cytolytic enzymes, and also, oh dear, and also myotoxins that work on the muscles. And when you get bitten by one of these, your flesh can literally rot. Can you hear that? I'm going to try and get it in somewhere, some better location. Let's try this rock up here. Oh, yeah. I said it. I've got a proper sweat on. That was a serious catch. For me, the most awesome thing about the Cobra is that sound. Actually, can you get a bit closer to the mic, mate? Listen to this. Can you hear that? That, that, that incredible hissing sound. You see now, it thinks that the microphone is lunch. <laughs> what it's doing, actually, if you look at its body, the body is really exaggeratedly breathing. Oh, you're getting a bit close to comfort now, mate. Oh, yeah. That is where the name monocle cobra comes from. As you can see, it's spreading its hood. You see on the back that eye spot, just like a monocle. It's kind of believed that that eye spot probably has the purpose of giving any predator no idea which side of the cobra is the front. Whee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get that, Mark. Luckily, the cobra's fangs sink harmlessly into Steve's boot. Get that, Mark. Look at my boot, it is absolutely dripping with cobra venom. You're a fiery little one, aren't you? God dear, that hiss. It doesn't matter what kind of animal you are, if you've never seen a snake before, there is no way that you're gonna take that sound for anything other than a threat. <laughs> that was an impressive snake but not the King Cobra Steve is looking for. It's time to look elsewhere. People in rural Thailand are used to living close to snakes, but not King Cobras. King Cobras need huge areas of totally undisturbed land. However, the fishermen in this village here have told me that just up the shoreline here, 
there's a six meter long king cobra. It's probably a bit of an exaggeration, but it's probably worth a try. Not a bad spot. Oh, good fire. This is a bit I like best. People tend to think that camping out in forests like these, you're tripping over snakes all the time, crawling in and out of your boots and your backpack. But in fact, snakes are so sensitive to movements and vibrations and smells that they're usually long gone before people turn up. They'd far rather hide than risk a potentially fatal encounter with something they can't eat. That means it can actually be quite difficult finding them. Ah! Pretty good catch. <laughs> Frogs and toes like this one a very common prey for members of the cobra family. In fact, some species will feed on little or nothing else. The way that cobra venom works is absolutely fascinating. It will actually attack a frog in the same way that it would attack a rat or another snake or even a human being. The molecules actually go for the respiration, so they'll actually affect heartbeat and breathing, but also they'll affect the animal's locomotion. So if the animal can't move, then it can't escape. Very striking, black and white coloration. We'll be very careful in this part of the world with snakes that look like this, because there's four or five species that have these very distinctive bands. A couple of them are harmless wolf snakes, but the other two are extremely venomous and very, very dangerous. And this is one of those. This is a banded crate responsible for as many deaths in this part of the world as just about any other species. It is actually related to the cobras, although it doesn't look like it, it doesn't hood out like a cobra does, but it has exactly the same kind of fangs and the same kinds of venom. Most of the fatalities that happen with banded crates actually occur when the snakes come into a person's house looking for food and uh, it's got into someone's bed and they've rolled over on it and the bite is actually almost painless. So quite often, People just never wake up. These parts of Thailand are rife with snakes, but Steve wants to find the biggest of them all, the King Cobra. This little caterpillar's made himself the perfect mobile home. A bunch of chewed up sticks, all bound together with a little silk sleeping bag. That's really cool. Hey, you got one. The last place he was expecting to find a king cobra was up a tree. Right, let's try and get it down. This is crazy. Come on, fella. Oh, shoot. Okay. Oh, down you go. Down you go. Okay. He's on the ground now. As soon as it's got its body supported, it's gonna feel a lot more secure and hopefully a lot less aggressive towards me. My problem is getting down without getting bitten. These cobras can lie still in ambush for days, but once they get started, they move like lightning. This is exactly what I've been hoping to find. A fully grown male king cobra. There is no scarier snake in the world to be close to. I'm just gonna get my camera. Hold on there, fella. Okay. Now you can see him. See that tongue flicking out, just tasting me on the air, drawing back scent molecules into its mouth that it's processing 
check out what I am, and whether I'm a threat to it, having just pulled them out of a tree, I think the answer is probably yes. But actually at the moment, you can see it's doing... Whoa! This cobra really means business. It's doing pretty much what king cobras always do in this kind of situation. It's putting on a big display, a big threat to let me know that I should leave it well alone. You see? Wow, this is really, really aggressive. This is a huge, huge snake. You can see that in some parts, it's as thick as my arm. I've got to give it a lot of respect. In fact, I could do with getting someone a little bit, a little bit more open. This undergrowth is scaring me a bit. See, it's very different working with one of these things in the wild in his environment to the snake shows that we've been watching. Here, he's at home, he's the king. I'm the one that's out of my depth. I need to get him somewhere where I can work with him a little bit more safely. Over here, over here. Look at that. See, normally with a cobra, you give it something moving and it'll follow it no matter what it is a rock or a stick or anything, but it's not interested in the stick at all. It's me he's got fixed on. Look, his head is just following me around. All right, fella. Okay, maybe I'll just get him to follow me. Come on then, come on then. too nervy with it at the moment. That's no good. Uh. Steve has good reason to be worried. If this snake bites him, the venom will start to do its deadly work immediately. He will be fully conscious while it slowly stops his heart and his breathing. Normally, neurotransmitters, tiny chemical messengers, fit the cell receptors like a key fits a lock. The neurotoxin, that's the nerve poison, fits the same keyhole exactly. It blocks the transmissions and the neuron stops firing and closes down. He wouldn't be able to move a muscle and then he would die. Look at that. As a reptile lover, this is the ultimate you can keep your rattlesnakes, your taipans, your tiger snakes. Nothing comes even close to a king cobra in the wild. I've been waiting my whole life for an opportunity like this. At the same time, there is no creature that can put your heart in your mouth quite like this one. You're talking about three and a half meters of deadly, deadly venomous killing machine. If I wasn't more persistent, I'd be about two miles away by now. You see the difference between this one and the ones they've been keeping in captivity. So much more alert, so much more aggressive. Tummy, whoa! It's quite close. You can't take your eyes off them for a millisecond. We're a long way away from civilization right now. Bites from king cobras have been known to kill people in a matter of minutes. So this is a potentially very serious situation. Steve Backshall is in the Thai jungle in the middle of nowhere, face to face with a huge king cobra. His plan is to catch this snake so he can test its venom on his own flesh. The only way to take him is to grab him on the back of the head. Oh, I really don't like that. <laughs> do I sign myself up to do this or do I just get him in the bag? Right. 
Come on, fella. Nice burrow for you. Look at that. No, it doesn't like it. So I'm going to have to take the head after all. Which, to be honest, has got me in my pants. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Christ on a bike. Calm down. If there was any other snake in the world, I'd have grabbed it by now. But this one has got me absolutely dripping with sweat. Look at you, you're a big monster, aren't you? Okay, come back towards me a little bit. That was the scariest moment I've ever had working with a wild animal. I don't mind admitting it. Look at that. Absolutely awesome. My heart's going like a drum. The hard bit is over. Now all he's got to do is get him in the bag. Trouble is, theory goes out the window when you're wrestling the world's longest venomous snake. This one's at least three and a half meters long. Sorry to have to ask you to do this, but can you hold the bag? Finally trapped in the bag, the snake is off to Bangkok to the World Health Organization. Snakes from all over Thailand are brought here and venom is extracted to make conventional antidote. If anyone can milk this snake for its venom, they can. You see, the first thing you need to do is to get the cobra, my cobra, to bite. And then it's going to release its venom from these glands along the upper jaw here called Devorny's glands. There you go. And that is the raw stuff there. That's our venom. Next, we take the venom off to the lab, where top scientist Dr. Eric Latman works when he's in Thailand. He's run a whole series of experiments with snake venom and rat tissue. The venom normally kills the tissue, but if he adds the magic plant extract, the tissue stays alive without any long-term damage. What we are doing here is we are stimulating electrically the tissue. We add the venom and the tissue dies slowly. The other tissue is treated with venom and antidote. And we can keep that tissue alive over many, many hours and it's 100% effective. Can you show me some of the results you're getting from this? Yes, of course. That's what we have recorded. If you just hold it there, you can see the recordings here have the venom, and you can see that the tissue dies within 20 minutes. Here you have the venom and 
the antidote, which is the organic compound, and it stays alive, alive. There's no change over many, many hours. Dr. Latman has not only proved that it works, he's taken it one step further. He now knows how a small piece of root destroys the toxins from the world's biggest venomous snake. It deforms the toxin, and then it smashes it. it. It's smashing it, and then it can't reach the target anymore. The plant is very aggressive. It hunts down the venom and effectively disarms it. The plant agent attacks the neurotoxin and bends it out of shape so it can't bind with the cell receptor. Like a broken key, it won't fit in the lock. The neurotransmitters can get through as usual. The cells work as normal, whilst the bent and damaged neurotoxins float harmlessly by. Snake venom is a complex cocktail of different poisons. Some kill you, some disable you. The really smart thing about this plant is, it knows which is which. But all the things that could kill you, it cures. That's why we think it's a miracle. It exactly can focus on the important things, on the survival. The cobra venom kills by closing down the muscles. The victims are conscious and look relaxed, but actually, they're dying. Any delay is fatal. On one occasion, a snake boxer was bitten on the leg. Instead of giving him the plant immediately, they delayed. In the precious race against time, just minutes were enough for the venom to get a deadly grip. After my brother was bitten by the cobra, he became very sleepy. The others helped him by putting him in an ice bath. The ice bath kept him awake, but it was too late. The neurotoxins had taken hold, and the plant didn't have time to fight back. What looked like relaxation was in fact a slow death, as his central nervous system shut down cell by cell. The problem they have is they think the people, they get sleepy, but they're not sleepy, they're relaxed. It's a muscle relaxing, so everything is hanging. That's the first stage. And the second stage is that the diaphragm is relaxed, and then they can't breathe anymore, and that's the end. The snake boxers eat huge amounts of the plant, often until they vomit, but that isn't enough. In this case, they brought in a magic doctor, but whilst he was praying, the king cobra venom was invading every organ of the snake boxer's body. Though the delay was only minutes, by the time the plant joined the battle, the war was already lost. The venom had taken control of his central nervous system. He would die. The only remaining question was, how soon? And in the morning, he just passed away in the hospital. I miss him very much. Whenever shows are on and they mention my brother, I feel very sad. Steve wanted to find out exactly what would have happened if the King Cobra had bitten him in the forest. He decided to take part in a scientific experiment putting some of its venom against cells from inside his mouth. If the snake handlers could see just how quickly the venom goes about its deadly business, they'd soon change their minds and take the plant every day for breakfast. Cobra venoms have many different components. The bit that kills you are the neurotoxins. They actually affect your nervous system, make your breathing shut down. There's many other nasties in there too. Some of them actually affect the cells, make the, uh, the cell walls break and make the contents spill out. It's called necrosis or cell death. And that's what you can see even after a few minutes here under this microscope. Legendary risk taker Bao Li Chai is no stranger to these effects. Thanks to our miracle plant, he has lived to tell the tale of his 19 cobra bites. Steve was skeptical to begin with, but this miracle root is truly amazing, and he thinks it's much better than conventional antivenom, which is given to snake bite victims all over the world. Antivenom is made by injecting tiny amounts of snake venom into horses, then harvesting the antibodies they produce. People imagine that this serum is some kind of magic cure. One jab and you're right as rain. In fact, it's highly toxic. If I was to inject myself with this stuff right now, it would make me as sick as a dog and possibly even kill me. 
Not only are the side effects of the standard antivenom horrendous, there's another problem. Antivenom producing sensors like this cost a small fortune, something developing countries just can't afford. Our revolutionary miracle route is very cheap, readily available, non-toxic, and has no side effects. Dr. Latman is a man with a mission. He knows that snake boxing is here to stay. In the fields around the village, the kids are already learning the moves which will entertain the crowds and keep the money rolling in. But survival shouldn't be just about skill. He wants them to be safe by taking the route every day, so they can live to boast about their war wounds like Bao Li Chai. This plant is a miracle cure at a very low concentration. It has 100% protection against the venom. Absolutely amazing. This is exactly why I really like this. The farmers could grow the plant, the farmers could make a product. They prepare the drug, maybe in a capsule or in an alcoholic solution, and that's it. And people can see that these simple solutions work very, very well. The mystery has been solved. A simple plant is amazingly effective against one of the world's most venomous creatures, the deadly king cobra. This plant grows in the tropics and everywhere there are venomous snakes. For the snake boxers and the villagers who are surrounded by these dangerous snakes, their lifesaver is right on their doorstep.